Hey, how's it going YouTube? This is Eman Los Angeles. And back in January, I made a video on how all these freight costs from China into the United States and into Europe has basically skyrocketed over the last 12 months. Well, last week, there was a big container ship that was stuck in the middle of Egypt. And when I first heard this news, I said, what is the big deal? It's only affecting companies that sell in Europe and it's not gonna affect me because I sell in the United States. Well, I'm here to tell you that this blockage in Europe and inside Egypt is going to affect basically everyone that gets goods and services from China because I think that freight rates are not only going to stay the same now, but I think they're gonna increase within 2021. And if you guys haven't heard about this actual blockage here, um, basically this article says that the Swiss Canal blockage is delaying an estimate $400 million an hour of goods. So every hour that this container was actually blocked was causing a lot of money to a lot of companies, right? Luckily now it is passing through, but I think the damage has been done already. And we see that it's affecting companies like Peloton, like Nike, like Tesla, even like Clorox. So it's basically every single supply you can really think of that come from China. And in that video I came out with in January, we went over this exact article that stated that an aggressive fight over containers is causing shipping costs to rocket by 300%. And even back then in January, IKEA Singapore called this a global transport Crisis. And at the end of the day, 300% seems like a huge number, but it really goes ahead and puts it into perspective when we actually see it in a graph format. So Bloomberg went ahead and put together this right here is the cost of cargo. Container shipping rates have soared and stayed elevated since mid 2020. So this is the pricing of a 40 foot container leaving China and either into Europe or in the West Coast here in the United States, right? And as you can go ahead and see this graph, the gray bar is coming to the West Coast and the red bar is going into Europe. And we can go ahead and see that over the years from 2016 all the way to 2020, we can see that both going ahead and shipping into the United States and into Europe costs right around $2,000. And we go ahead and see that in mid-2020 and all the way until now, Europe is paying right around $9,000 for a 40-foot container to get delivered. And here in the United States, is right around $5,000, which is insane, right? So this is why I'm really worried because all of this data is before this blockage took place. So to really understand why this actual pricing has skyrocketed so much, we have to take a look at what's happened within the last year. One, this thing called COVID, right? So there's been different protocols at each port. There's obviously been people that were sick that needed to be laid off. So there's not enough workers. So when the ships come from China and regardless if that's Europe or in the United States, there's less people to go ahead and check in and it's causing congestion at all over every port in the entire world. But that's just one issue. And the second reason why there has been a surge in pricing is because during COVID, people were stuck at home. They weren't really going ahead and going to the local mall or a regular retail store nearby. They shifted their focus on going ahead and purchasing things on Amazon, like Walmart, or just basically anything that involved being online. So when we saw a shift happening that was supposed to happen in 2025 when it came to going ahead and adopting that online type of shopping experience happened in 2020 because of us being stuck at home. And believe it or not, those other two reasons is not directly correlated as to why these shipping costs has gone up so much. Because if we go ahead and take a look at that article, the reason behind the surge in pricing is right over here. It says, so what's happening is what has already been a trade surplus in China has turned dramatically more severe. And the reality is there's three containers going out for every container that's coming in. So let's go ahead and use an example of what's actually occurring. So a lot of people around the entire world manufacture their goods in China, right? So let's say the United States, for every three containers full of goods from China are getting shipped from China into the United States. But the Chinese aren't purchasing 
three containers worth of actual inventory from the United States to sell in China. In a perfect world, for every three containers that's coming out of China with their goods and services into the United States, there should be three containers of goods and services coming from the United States into the Chinese economy as well, right? So that's exactly what's not happening right now. So now that we have more and more containers stuck in this actual canal, we know that now it's not really a three to one type of ratio. Maybe now for every five to six containers leaving China only one is coming back in because all these containers are stuck on ships that have been delayed because of this blockage itself and if these freight costs for 40 foot containers is here to stay for 2021 and in the future there is a tough question that needs to be answered by all of these companies that sell goods in the United States and Europe and that's should we raise the prices of our products right because at the end of the day we were always anticipating that this prices for this fry cost is going to come back down when everything settles down when we are reopening when COVID cases come down but now it seems like these actual shipping fry costs might be here to stay longer than we anticipated. And again, it is a tough decision because no one wants to see inflation happen, right? So again, I don't know what's going to happen. I can only go ahead and guesstimate that these prices are here to stay until 2021. So it's basically a decision of all of these products and, and owners of these companies to decide if they will raise their prices even just the slightest bit to account for all of this money they are spending on freight costs. All of this is just my opinion. If I missed anything, or if you guys have any more information on what you think is going to happen with these prices, I would really appreciate if you guys go ahead and mention anything you might know in the comment section below. I'll go ahead and be in there interacting with anybody that's commenting. So again, please like this video, comment on this video itself, but until next time guys, peace.